Hey, so welcome back to video six of this HTML5 game series. If you haven't seen some of the other videos, be sure to check them out or else you might be a little lost in this video. But in this video, we're pretty much adding the ability for the tank to fire a bullet. You can see here as I press space on my keyboard, it fires a bullet and then I have a delay of every second. So I can't just keep firing. And again, if you want access to the code, you can find it at this URL, github.com slash Cody slash YouTube. In every video, it has a separate folder that you can kind of look at if you wanted to play around with the code or use it for yourself. So in the code itself, the main thing that changed is first of all, you can press space on your keyboard. So if we look at the input JS file, we see that we have another entry in this code map which is mapping our space key to a, an internal fire action. Other than that, we didn't really add anything in this file. Um, some of the things that changed on the main game loop is we have a list of entities, which we loop over. And for each one, we call a update method based on the type of entity. And then we loop over all the entities and we draw them. So an entity is basically just a rep representation of some type of object on the screen. And it's just a collection of data that, you know, each entity has different types that do different things. So in this case, we have a tank entity and we have a bullet entity. So if I were to scroll up a little bit, we have a map of entity types, tank and bullet. And then as we update our entities, we basically figure out what entity type we are looking at and then we call that update method based on the entity type and pass it the entity progress and state and then we also have something called a physics handler which is basically just applying velocity to the entity if the entity has like a vx or a vy and we'll show that in a second so the second thing that changes is we have a draw entities method which basically just loops over every entity in the game and it calls the draw method of that. So if you remember before, every the tank entity and the bull entity both had an update and a draw method. So basically those loops are just calling those. And I think that's all that kind of changed in this. I mean, I did add back this timestamp so we can actually keep track of how much time has passed between each game loop. So that is basically what this variable is doing. If you saw that in one of the other videos, basically every time this callback function calls to animate some amount of time has passed whether that's 10 or 20 milliseconds and that, that is basically what progress is keeping track of and we're going to be using progress to know when we can fire the tank's bullet again that's set to a second delay we look at the state um, it changed a little bit we used to have a tank property here with like all of this stuff but now we just have an array of entities and we start off with a single entity of type tank. And then we also have some VX and VY, which is kind of new. We have a fire delay and an until next fire. Fire delay is basically how long we should wait until we can fire, fire again. And then until next fire is an internal representation to keep track of how much time we have left until we're able to file fire. Let's look at the tank class first because that is what's actually creating the bullet and firing it. So inside the tank class, we first have a change here in the update method, method which basically says, um, or which basically reduces the time that we have to wait until we can fire again. So if, if you remember, this is set to like zero when we first start. But after you fire a bullet, it gets reset to a thousand milliseconds. And then we keep on subtracting from that as our, our tank is updating. And the second thing we changed in this update method was a fire bullets method. So I'm going to go ahead and go to that and show you. Inside here, we basically check if the fire input is true, which basically means we press space on our keyboard. And we check if we have the ability to fire. So basically until next fire is less than zero. And if those are both true, that means we can fire a bullet off. And what we do is we reset until next fire to our fire delay, which will be a hundred or a thousand milliseconds. And then we push a new bullet entity into the state.entities array. 
And the main things to point out here is we want the bullet to start at the same position out of the tank. And then we want the bullet to travel at an angle that is matching that gun angle, right? So these are basically what we'll be using here. And what I haven't shown yet is the bullet.create method. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the bullet entity, which is imported here from dot slash bullet. So looking at the bullet entity, it's pretty straightforward. We have a draw method, which just draws a red rectangle, five by five width and height at a location of X and Y. Um, we also have a create method, which basically just takes in a position and an angle. It figures out the velocity that we need for this bullet, and it just returns us a simple JSON object back with type bullet. So if you remember in our main game loop, we had those list of entity types where bullet is one of those types. And now that we've added a new entity into our entities list, when this runs, it's going to update that entity. But it turns out that the bullet has nothing in its update method. So how does it actually move? Well, it goes back to that physics handler. So let's look at the code of the physics handler. And basically what this is doing is it just checks that the entity has both a VX and a VY. And if it does, we just increment the position using those velocities. So it's pretty straightforward, but it's kind of um, it's called using composition and components that kind of create your game objects instead of classes. So this is just one approach you can kind of dry up and reuse code. And I think that covers basically all the changes that we had for just getting a tank to fire a bullet. And again, this is the end result. We can drive around and if I hold down space, you'll see that we fire a bullet every second. Well, I hope this video was helpful. Feel free to leave suggestions in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. I'm Cody Seipert and thanks for watching.